slides. Uh, I'm going to uh, go through the slides, and then uh, if you have a question while I'm going through a slide, feel free to interrupt me, and then I'll go into um, a troubleshooting session and a configuration session for uh, some password policies uh, on-prem uh, in a, a lab domain and uh, in Azure AD. So I'll show you where those policies are and where the passwords are configured, uh, how they're synchronized and so forth. So um, the audiences may be different. There may be some audiences that are very technically savvy and there may be some listeners who are only interested in the risk aspect of this. Um, so I want to go through the slides first and then we'll go into a more interactive um, session uh, with a Q&A. I'm going to present my screen. Uh, so before um, I dive into the slides, I just want to maybe uh, uh, tell a little bit about myself. Um, so I, I have a, a background in um, network administration uh, and um, system, uh, system administration, mostly on the Microsoft side. Uh, I've been in the industry for about 23 years. Uh, I, uh, I work as a lead systems architect uh, for Lega Systems. I um, used to be a Microsoft VTSP uh, or a virtual uh, technology sales professional. I was a Microsoft trainer for many years. I used to teach classes uh, and uh, I worked for um, other consulting companies in the past. So I, I worked for about 10 years. Um, in uh, enterprise IT and uh, in the consulting field since uh, 2010. Um, so I do uh, still teach classes once in a while at Northeastern. Uh, I went to Northeastern for both undergrad and grad. So that's kind of my background. Uh, currently, I work mostly on um, cybersecurity uh, in um, Microsoft product line, um, Active Directory on-prem, Azure AD, uh, Sentinel, um, Azure uh, Security Center, uh, Azure Policies, uh, Virtual Machine Management, System Center, and um, Exchange. So that's kind of my um, my specialty. So uh, the premise for for this subject uh, for password security uh, and password uh, policies is the um, the blast radius uh, in case the passwords get compromised either on-prem or um, in Azure AD. So the the average cost of a data breach is 4 million and 81% of breaches um, involve weak or stolen passwords. Uh, and most organizations, about two thirds, don't know how to properly configure their, their password policies um, either due to lack of knowledge or understanding or lack of talent, um, who can get it right. Uh, and three of four uh, passwords are shared uh, across various accounts. So an individual typically has three or four passwords and they share them everywhere. So if somebody is using their um, account, their, their work account to sign up for Netflix and their Netflix accounts gets compromised and the password is discovered, then um, that password can be used for uh, breaching their Office 365 uh, or an on-prem service that has um, exposure to the outside. Uh, so here's the uh, the agenda. What I'll cover, I'll uh, cover Active Directory Classic uh, and the password uh, framework there. Uh, password security object will actually uh, create a password security object together, and I'll show you how. Uh, it's configured, what it's used for, um, local password management, uh, how to check on password expiration uh, dates, um, and uh, uh, there is a PowerShell script that comes with that. I'll show you where to find it. Uh, password uh, expiration notifications, both uh, in on-prem Active Directory and in Azure AD, and I'll talk about uh, the biggest threats, what they are, how to mitigate them when it comes to um, on-prem passwords. Uh, Azure AD um, and the hybrid password management. 
Uh, I'll cover AD Sync and AD Connect, which is the uh, replication um, uh, software or replication app uh, from on-prem AD to uh, Azure AD, uh, sync configuration and hybrid sync options, uh, password sync, uh, sync and write back. Uh, the differences in policies in uh, AD on-prem and um, Azure AD policies, um, group write back and self-service password reset. So those are the features in Azure AD. Uh, session defaults and credential caching, and then I will talk briefly about MFA, which is a, a subject of its own. So uh, the reason why passwords um, are still very important, uh, they were used from the early days of the computing. Um, they, come, they come from the 50s and 60s. Uh, they still remain the fundamental component of security. Um, I hear a lot of talk about password less, um, authentication and author authorization, but I haven't seen anyone who has been able to um, implement it um, successfully. Um, and other authentication methods like 2FA, uh, factor two authentication, um, they help, um, but they, they're more of a augmentation factor right now. Uh, they help make it more secure, but the password is the, uh, the main uh, authentication and authorization um, mechanism because MFA doesn't work everywhere uh, and password does. And Active Directory on-prem and Azure AD still use password uh, for authentication for now. So um, the password is something that you know and the two-factor uh, is something that you have. So if you can combine those two, then that will make the logon process more um, secure. Um, and um, the, the password uh, safety depends on complexity. So this chart here is from uh, Statista, which um, gives you a matrix of how many characters are in the password uh, and how secure it is based on whether the complexity has lowercase, uppercase, special character, or a number. So the more characters you can have in the password um, and the more variations there are to guess for a password, and the variations can be uh, numbers, uh, special symbols, uppercase, the longer it takes to uh, to break the password. Um, so that's why uh, password complexity matters. Um, so in a hybrid uh, Azure AD environment, um, there are certain objects that can get replicated. Uh, recently, Microsoft uh, renamed um, Azure AD into um, Entra, so that's the new uh, marketing term. They they rename their products um, every few months. It keeps the marketing team busy, uh, so I still call it Azure AD for now. I might have to rename uh, my charts and slides based on that, but um, initially when um, Office 365 was offered, this is going back to 2012, uh, because customers had all of their objects, users, computers and accounts in the on-prem AD, Microsoft had to come up with a way to give those um, users services in the cloud. So they came up with initially what was called AD Sync, which was a utility to sync from on-prem to AD. And uh, here's what gets synced. Um, on-prem devices can get synced um, by default, you have user accounts and groups, and it also syncs contacts, and you can sync custom attributes. And there is a wizard that you can go through to configure what gets synced. Um, so user accounts from on-prem replic get replicated to uh, Azure AD. Uh, groups get replicated, and you can um, replicate your password. So there is... Um, um, there are several modes for authentication in Azure AD. One of them is called um, uh, password authentication. One of them is called password sync, uh, password hash synchronization. So path through authentication is not frequently used these days because it's been uh, proven to be unsecure. Um, most uh, hybrid tenants use password hash synchronization. So password hash is a hash of your password from on-prem Azure AD 
that will get synchronized um, into Azure AD from the on-prem AD. And then there's a feature called password write back. Uh, if you configure it, it's optional, which can write the password in Azure AD uh, back to um, AD on-prem. And why that matters is because uh, if you have users who don't often log on to um, an on-prem device, it's difficult for them to change their password. And if you have users logging onto on-prem AD and Azure AD at the same time, and they change their password in one, you want that password to synchronize to the other so that there is no uh, conflict on, of passwords uh, causing their accounts um, to get locked out. Um, and uh, it is possible to configure what's called group write back. Uh, if you write the group back uh, to uh, from Azure AD back to on-prem AD, that will give you additional um, capabilities. You can assign those groups um, resources in the on-prem AD um, and the groups originate in Azure AD. So uh, that that is a possibility, it's an option and device write back allows uh, to replicate um, Azure AD devices back to uh, on-prem. So that's what gets replicated and what doesn't. Um, so there, there are uh, differences in password policies. Uh, On-prem uh, AD password policy comes from the default domain group policy. Uh, you can also use um, either custom policies, which is not recommended uh, because they're a nightmare to troubleshoot, or you can use a password security object. And a password security object is um, a policy that affects a specific group that has its own uh, complexity uh, and lockout periods. Um, and then in Azure AD, you have uh, an Azure AD policy um, that is used to assign um, a password um, maximum age and notification period. Uh, and you can also assign um, ma uh, the maximum number of characters or minimum number of characters, excuse me, minimum number of characters uh, to to the password. So um, there is a workflow that determines which policy applies. Um, the on-prem users that get replicated from on-prem to Azure AD, they get the, the policy from uh, the default domain uh, policy. Uh, they get they get they get their password policy from default domain policy. The users that are created uh, in Azure AD and are home to Azure AD, they get the password policy from Azure AD. Um, however, there is a switch that can enforce Azure AD password policy on the replicated accounts, uh, and um, I'll show you where that switch is. Uh, it's something that's customizable and configurable. It's important to know where the password policy comes from um, so that you can do a spot check and ensure that uh, the, po the policy actually uh, works. Uh, so I, I have a workflow that shows where and how those policies uh, affect the accounts, which will be one, one of the um, future slides. But um, something to take away from here is that the policies are different and they affect accounts differently depending on where that account is created and what policy is assigned. So uh, in the Active Directory on-prem, um, the default domain policy is deployed when you first deploy your domain. Uh, it's there by default. Uh, there is a predefined set of complexity history and lockout elements in that policy that can be customized. Um, it does not provide expiration notifications by default. So if you deploy a new domain, you install a Windows Server, promote it to domain controller, set up a new domain, um, there are no notifications uh, configured for, for password expiration. So you can uh, limit the number of calls to the help desk uh, just by configuring notifications to the users that their password will expire. There's also no there's also no lockout period or lockout duration by default in that policy. And that policy will apply to uh, all accounts that are in the root of the domain. 
um, unless you have a different policy set or you have a PSO. And uh, those policies get processed by a domain controller at logon. Uh, the domain controller PDC emulator is the FISMA role that holds all the passwords. So anytime that somebody logs on on a domain, um, that password before a hash is issued for a logon, that password has to get checked um, in the PDC emulator to make sure that the user has um, entered the correct password. Um, so this is on um, uh, brute force attack and mitigation. Um, uh, two of the elements in the default um, domain policy on-prem, and uh, there's equivalent also uh, in Azure AD is account lockout and uh, lockout duration. So if somebody's contact conducting a brute force attack, uh, let's say a hacker or an attacker um, finds some servers where they can guess a user um, password and they have harvested user accounts, um, they can try a certain number of attempts um, by brute force. So they use a tool or a list of possible passwords uh, that they guess for a known account. And if you don't have a lockout um, threshold, meaning number of account, number of uh, times that they can try a password, or if you don't have a duration for a lockout, uh, then they can try unlimited number of using the passwords. So it's important to make sure that you have uh, account threshold and duration configured in your policies, and I'll show you where those are configured um, so that if they try five passwords, for example, and they're all wrong, then the account gets locked out and it gets locked out for uh, a specific uh, duration, let's say five or 10 minutes. So like the default in Azure AD, for example, is 10 minutes. So they try five passwords, all five fail, their account is locked out for 10 minutes, and then the attacker cannot try to um, guess the, the password for the next 10 minutes. And hopefully while that's happening, there's some uh, alerting or monitoring that's in place uh, to alert you that this is actually uh, happening. Uh, so I'll show you where that's configured. Uh, Active Directory PSO um, is a, a password security object. Uh, it's a separate policy that can be scoped to uh, a limited number of users. Let's say uh, you work as a sysadmin for a company and um, the CIO comes and says, we want to have passwords of higher complexity for all the admin users, but the HR is against it because they think that people will be frustrated or there are people in finance who don't want to have more complex passwords. So this is where you would use a PSO uh, password security object. Uh, it's a, a separate security policy where it can be assigned to an individual group of users um, to require more complex passwords. Uh, and then in Azure AD, uh, depending on the type of tenant that you have, um, the capabilities are different. So the commercial, the regular tenant, as you would call it, uh, comes with uh, some capabilities. So you can set, for example, password agent notifications. Uh, and you can also set um, a lockout uh, threshold and lockout duration. Uh, but that's what Azure AD is limited to. In other tenants uh, like B2B government and B2C, you can also set password complexity requirements. Um, so depending on, on your tenant, um, the capabilities will be different, but most likely if you're just a commercial uh, tenant, then then you can set those those four elements of the policy, and that's what you're limited to, because Microsoft uh, controls um, the Azure AD tenant. Uh, you can manage it, but you don't control it. So you can, for example, um, set a complexity requirement uh, for an Azure AD tenant. That's something that Microsoft manages. So, uh, for instance, this is. Um, 
something that you can change, uh, lockout threshold and duration. Uh, you can do this in Azure AD uh, security authentication methods, password protection. So uh, if you go to password protection in Azure AD, you can set the uh, lockout threshold and duration. Like this one is set for one minute, but it should probably be um, longer than that. Um, and if you have like a P1 or a P2 subscription, then you have identity protection, which should alert you to um, someone trying to brute force um, a, a password uh, for a user account. If you have AD on-prem, then those attempts would be recorded in a security log of the domain controller. Um, and you should probably have some monitoring solution for that. Uh, so this next one is um, on the default complexity in age and age. Uh, so this is in um, Azure AD, what's allowed. So um, you're allowed lower and uppercase characters, special characters, numbers. Um, there's a minimum of um, eight characters uh, for a password and a maximum of 256. And the reason why like 256 is is a is a high number, and the reason why you would have that is, for example, for like AD Connect, um, you cannot have MFA on that account, but that account um, needs to be a global admin in Azure AD in order to be able to um, to replicate uh, and set values on uh, user accounts. So for so that's a service identity. So for a service identity, you may want to have a longer uh, password, and that's why this upper limit is set at 256. Uh, default password age is 90 days. Uh, I've seen some tenants where this is not set at all and the notification is not set. So you wanna make sure that if you're setting up or if you have uh, an Azure AD tenant, uh, you wanna make sure you have um, password age and, and notification period um, set in the policy. So it's always, I mean, any um, tenant should be audited for these settings. If you've never audited your tenant, it's probably a good idea to um, to audit it, um, to know what these settings are in your tenant, because I've seen tenants that were set up from scratch and had one set of values, and then you go and you set up another tenant, and it doesn't have those values, or it has different values in the policies. And it, it's it's Microsoft world, it's, not something that I can explain why things a certain way, but you have to check these for yourself. Uh, and then in the on-premise Active Directory, um, the allowed characters are the same. Uh, you can have a space, but it cannot be a leading or a trailing space. Uh, typically we see A to Z and then numbers, special characters, um, so you can set that complexity, uh, and these are the characters allowed. Um, by default, password expiration is 42 days on-prem. This is set in the default um, domain policy, and uh, notifications are not configured and should be configured. It will store 24 most recent passwords. So this is a password change history uh, to ensure that the user doesn't uh, reuse previous passwords uh, because if the passwords get leaked and uh, some time goes by, user re reuses the password, then um, it may be easier to guess. Uh, and then uh, reset history, um, how many passwords to keep in the history of, uh, of changed passwords. Uh, and this is uh, the last slide, and then I'll dive into um, showing you where, where these policies are configured. So this is a decision tree uh, that tells you which uh, password policy wins. Um, for uh, a hybrid environment where accounts are uh, replicated. Um, so first um, step is to look at where um, the account is authoritative. So if the account is created on-prem, then it's authoritative on-prem and in a hybrid environment, it would replicate um, into Azure AD. If the account was created in Azure AD, 
uh, then Azure AD is authoritative. Uh, so if the account is created in Azure AD, then you would look um, to see if you have custom policies. And you can do this with a um, MSOL online uh, PowerShell um, to see what policies are there. Um, sometimes, uh, like in the new tenants, I see that there are no policies and one is created. But if you go to an environment that's been there for a while, there may have been uh, policies created by previous admins, so there may be multiple policies. So we want to see if there are custom policies set up. Um, if there are no policies set up or no custom policies, then it will be the default uh, Azure policy, and you want to make sure that it's actually there. Because if it's not there, then there is no policy applying. Um, if there are custom policies, then you need to look at um, the policy assigned to that specific user, and there's a PowerShell script that you can run or a PowerShell command if you want to look up um, a policy for a specific user, uh, you can do that. So you want to look at the user assigned policy for the Azure AD user uh, to determine which policy is assigned. So in Azure AD, uh, it's pretty simple because uh, the on-prem policies cannot apply uh, to an Azure AD user. You could have a policy from Azure AD apply to a replicated account, but not vice versa. Azure AD policy, password policy created in Azure AD will never apply to, to an on-prem account. So that's a um, rule of thumb that's, that's good to know and remember. Uh, for an on-prem account, you want to look at whether the default domain policy applies to an account, and you can do that uh, using uh, RSLP result instead of policy uh, for the user or uh, in, in the logon itself, or you can do it in um, Active Directory users and computers. Uh, you can run uh, RSLP result instead of policy there. So if the default domain policy applies, um, then then you get whatever policy is, is there by default. Uh, but if the default domain policy doesn't apply, um, then you want to see if there is an other group policy in the domain that applies to that user that has um, password policy elements in it. So sometimes admins will create a group policy and they'll drag a user object into that policy or, or link it to an OU where they are to get another password policy to apply to them. So you want to see if there is another group policy that applies to that account. Uh, and you also want to look at if there is um, a password security object configured um, uh, in um, Active Directory Management, if there is, an, is a PSO uh, configured, then you want to see if uh, it's scoped to a group. And if it's scoped to a group, then if the, the user that you are discovering this for is a member of that group. Um, if PSO uh, doesn't apply, um, you want to see if the uh, password, Azure AD password switch is on. So on uh, an account that's replicating from um, on-prem into Azure AD, will have the Azure AD password policy in Azure if this switch is on. Um, if you don't have the switch and you can't find out uh, where the policy is, uh, the password policy for the user comes from, then there's likely some other problem. There's either no policy applying on prem, and then there's no policy applying in Azure. Um, if there is no policy applying on prem, but you have the switch on, then on prem there is no policy applying for the user. Um, but in Azure AD, you get the Azure password policy. I know it's a little bit um, unconventional here, but this is how the, the, the password policy framework was designed to work. Um, and sometimes you just have to get into it to start looking at what that what actually applies to the user. And, and this is um, what what this is about. I mean, I very often will we'll, I'll have a customer that just can't figure out where the password policies are, co are coming from, and then they'll They'll engage me just for that one little project to figure out who gets what password from where and how often it needs to be changed and whether users get notifications or should get notifications. 
uh, and how they can get notified that the password needs to be changed. So hopefully this workflow will help someone determine um, where the policies come from. Um, if you can't figure it out in your environment, you can ping me and I'll be happy to help. Um, so before I kind of dive into the hands-on part, is there anyone that has a question on this or any of the previous slides? Are there any questions? Okay, in that case, um, I have a checklist of what uh, I'm going to show and I'm just going to jump into my lab here. Uh, so I'll end the slideshow. And I'll put it back on the first slide with the agenda. Um, I do want to state that this environment is pretty uh, raw, um, meaning that it, it doesn't have everything working in it. Uh, I've, I've been blamed in the past on kind of showing uh, in demos environments where everything really works, and then the, the, the audience tried to go use it or do something on their environment and it doesn't work the same way or it's just not working. So this one is quite broken and if we find broken things, we'll try to fix them uh, together or it may have, it may be working, but there are policies that um, have not yet been configured. So it's something that we can do together. So um, the first item to go over is the, the, the password policy on-prem. So this is um, uh, one of my lab domains, uh, westernmotors.local. Um, you can see that I, I have um, the crew policy management open, and here I have the uh, Active Directory users and computers. So there are some, some test users here uh, that are created. Uh, if you go to group policy management, you click on show all, you'll see that that this is where the password policy is. And uh, this is the default one that came uh, with this domain when I built it. Uh, so these these are all the, um, the values that, uh, that were there by default. So like the, um, the complexity and the password age um, uh, are the default ones. Um, seven uh, characters for password, um, age, minimum password, age one day. So how do you, um, how do you change this if you want to change this? So if you just click on uh, edit here, um, you can actually see uh, in the settings uh, where the elements are just by viewing them. You can see this goes to computer configuration policies, Windows settings, security settings. So uh, if you don't know where to navigate in the, in the group policy management, then you can just follow what, what you see here. So you go to policies, uh, Windows settings, security settings, account policies. So this is where you can set that password policy. So, so you can change that here from, let's say you want to change from seven characters to eight. You can hit that here. Password age, uh, let's see how someone might say that 42 is too long. So um, normally what I what I like to do is I, I like to match the password um, expiration uh, in on-prem AD with, uh, with Azure AD so that you don't have users whose pa who are getting prompted for their password expiring on-prem, but then when they log on to Office 365, that password is still good there. So I'm gonna set this to uh, 60 days because I think I have the same um, in Azure AD, but if not, we can match it. So I'll set this 60 days. And then uh, you can see that here in account logout, this is not defined. And this is the domain that came um, Vanilla, as they say, um, from 
um, the initial domain installation. So I want to enable this uh, for brute force, brute force attack mitigation. So uh, let's say I'm going to lock out the account for, let's do 20 minutes. And then the account uh, threshold, th this enabled itself automatically once I put the threshold to 20 minutes. So it will lock out after five invalid attempts for 20 minutes. And then the calendar will be reset after, I'll say, 20 minutes. So now we have this configured. Um, and uh, this is something that can be uh, tested through our SOP. So we can test that. And then for, for password notification, um, I just picked up a, a blank policy and we're going to configure this together. You see this policy has nothing in it, but we want to war warn users about um, their password expiring. So I have to find um, where that is. I actually don't remember where it is. I have to look it up one sec. In the meantime, if, um, if there are questions, please feel free to ask. So it's computer configuration, Windows settings, security settings. So actually Windows settings, security settings, local policies, security options, I think. Interactive logon prompt user. So I have to scroll down for there. So this is the notification policy. Define this policy settings. So let's say this one is, uh, if the password expires within 14 days, so I'll hit apply and okay. So now this um, element is enabled in this policy. So, and this is, um, since this is a computer configuration, it will, it will affect the computer accounts. So when the user logs on, this will get processed um, and the user will get their notification. So while, since I set this up in, um, uh, in on-prem AD, I want to go and look where uh, to set up the, the lockout threshold uh, in my Azure AD tenant. So we're in the same subject. So here, go to portal, dot azure.com, if I can spell it right, I'm missing an L. See, my, it's uh, Azure AD is now renamed Entra. Uh, you can see that that's changed. So, see, we're gonna look for security authentication methods. Password protection. So this is where you can configure the the threshold. So right now I have my threshold set to five uh, in the on-prem AD. So I'm going to set this just to, uh, the same to five, and then lockout duration in seconds. Uh, I had five minutes, so uh, let's set this to 300, which is going to match. Uh, I'm going to save this. There is uh, also a custom band passwords list, and this can be configured to work in Azure AD and then also in the on-prem uh, AD. Uh, you can um, create a list of words that you don't want to be used inside passwords. Uh, but we don't have that right now. Um, it is here if you want to use it. So. Uh, on the password uh, policies, the threat for uh, brute force prevention, you have the local threshold and then local duration. Uh, and then uh, for password policies, um, I recommend, there is something in Office 365 that's 
available to admins. So you go to portal that office and then admin um, in the if you look at the org settings here. Or where, where this is where it was. Security and privacy. OK, I got to click on that. Uh, password expiration policy there. OK, couldn't open it. No longer works. See, this is why. I said that it might be better to use uh, PowerShell because in, in that portal, it doesn't always work. So, one moment, I'm going to pull something up. So in PowerShell, you can run get uh, MSOL password policy for the domain, and then it will show you. See, there's I don't I actually don't have this is a new domain uh, and a new tenant. Um, there's no validity period and no notification days. So let's see if that's something that I can set. Typically, there would be one there, but this is uh, a new tenant that I set up, and maybe Microsoft doesn't. Um, provide that anymore. So let's see if we can run set uh, MSO policy. So we're going to try okay. So I just ran that and then Let's see if I can run the get command again. Bam, okay. So now it's set. So we just set the notification days to 14 and validity period to 90. So here we didn't have, actually I, I had it set to 60 on my uh, on-prem. So I may wanna change this to 60. Let's do that just to match it. And if I write run get again, okay, it's gonna show me here. So interesting thing is, um, let's see what happens if I hit refresh here in Office 365, if I can get that, see, it still doesn't show up. It should be showing up here, but it's not. And that's why, we like to use PowerShell. Yeah, looks like that's not going to work. Um, okay, so any questions on this, on setting um, notifications and validity periods? I don't see anything in the chat. All right, no question. Okay, um, let's go to the next area to cover. How to check on password expiration and enforcement. And also password security object. So let's see if we can set up a password security object. Um, if you go to server manager, And then local server. There should be kind of hidden. Let's 
Let's see if I have an Active Directory Management module. Okay, this might work. Uh, Active Directory Administrative Center. And then find my domain. System. Password settings container. Okay, so that's what you want. We're looking for ESO. Disappearing new password setting. See, it's it's kind of hidden, but you can uh, you can find it. Um, this is what you're looking for: the password settings container. So this is where the PSO it gets created, the password security object. So we're going to create this one. Um, any name suggestions? Let's call this uh, executives. Uh, so it's going to have a precedence number, and what that means is, if you have multiple uh, PSOs, ma multiple password security objects, let's say you have one for executive team and then one for the board of trustees or finance, then they're going to have a precedence number, and sometimes you have users who are in multiple groups, so you're going to have um, a collision of policies, right? So in order to prevent that, we'll put a, say, this is going to be precedence two, so that next time you create a policy, we can have it as four and so on. So here you can have the, the password uh, length. We're going to make this one, we're going to require 10 passwords. Remember, we're going to make it more complex. Let's make this 30, must miss complexity requirements. Um, password age. Users cannot pa change passwords within, let's say, 20 days. Uh, the reason why you may want to have this one is because uh, if you set the minimum password age to one day and then passwords remembered is also one, then you're going to have some users who are going to try to recycle the password to go back to the password they had again. So they're going to try to change their password to the previous password. And this has actually happened. So uh, if you set the the minimum uh, user cannot change password for 20 days, then they can't go back to their previous password from before. Um, and then the maximum age, let's, let's make this one 90 because the executives don't like to change their password too frequently. Um, account policy will make this um, failed logins attempts three. And then reset the counter after 20, and then duration is going to be 10. I don't like that because it has to match. Has, duration has to be more than the than the calendar reset. So let's make it 10 and 10. Okay. And then uh, applies to this is where you add the group. Uh, so if I don't have a group yet, or if you don't have a group that you want to assign this to, so you can go to, uh, let's, we're going to create this in finance, we're going to create a new group, we'll call it um, complex passwords. Okay, John Connor is there. So we'll put John Connor into that group. See if he can beat um, Skynet. Okay, so now let's look for that group here. Complex passwords, okay. So this password security object is now assigned to complex passwords. Okay. So that's it, your, your PSO is created. If you go back here, 
to password citizen container. Before we were clicking on it, nothing was happening. But now if you click on it, then you can see um, I have the PSO here. And if you click on the PSO, then we'll open it. We'll, it will tell you its settings. So if you have another one created and you have a different precedence number, then multiple can be processed. Uh, and the reason why you have the precedence is that if you have users who are in, in both groups, then the precedence will play out which policy they will actually get. Um, any questions on password settings con container? Okay. Um, next thing I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to determine when a user password actually expires. And the reason why this is important is if you put a policy in place, you want to know that the policy is actually working. Um, the user will never call you or the help desk to say that, by the way, I've had the same password for eight years um, because they, they're more comfortable with not having to change their password, right? So you wanna be able to go and see uh, if the user password actually expires and when it expires. And there are a couple of different ways to do that. Um, one one way is um, um, to look at their object in Etsy edit. So if you type in ADSI edit, hopefully I have it on this machine. Let's try this way. Bingo. So if you're not familiar with ADSI edit, this is like the, the raw version of looking at what's an Active Directory. Um, you can pick different contexts here, like the configuration schema. If you pick the, uh, the default, then it will just show you the objects that are in the uh, Active Directory domain partition. So you can expand this here. I want to find my users. So for example, let's go to finance and find John Connor. And if you right click on John Connor and go to properties. So these are like all the attributes that are on his account. Um, you can filter it and say, show only attributes that have values. So count doesn't expire. Let's see, we're looking for when changed. Last password set, 918. Okay, so what we can do for John Connor, for example, because we have him uh, in, the, in the PSO, um, we can change the password maximum age to, let's say, five days in that PSO and then see what happens when he logs in. Um, if any of this change, so I have the password last set. I don't have a value for, uh, for password expiration. So there is a, uh, a password expiration script um, that I put, it's in one of my articles. There is a PowerShell script that you can run uh, to see when password expires. So let me, let me grab that. It's a constructed attribute. Um, so I think if you can filter it based on constructed attributes, it should. Sh Do you know the attribute name? Yeah, it's something called MSDS. Um, user password something like that yeah it, it could be something here but it may not be stamped because so do you have in your filter the check uh, for constructed attributes turned on 
So yeah, go to constructor. Yeah, turn it on. Yeah. Now you should see it. And now you have might be even the ones with values. Modify. It you MSDS user password expiry time computed. This one doesn't, and yeah, that's not set. But I'm glad when somebody actually is on with me that knows more than I do. That's great. Um, I, I typically pull this from from PowerShell. I want to see if um, if I can get my script. Uh, one sec. Well, let's let's log on as that user. Um, we have a Windows 10 machine. I want to see if that changes to show you where it's actually set. So, copy Sam. Oh no. He's not authorized. Let me put him in the uh, admins. So now that his logon gets processed, No, just sh sh shadow expire. Doesn't give a date. Okay. 
Okay. Um, there's another way. One sec. Yeah, because he doesn't have an expiration date set for some reason. Maybe he needs to log off. But um, this is the command that you would use for this. Let me see if I can do some other user. I don't know if it's just a problem with his account. Could be. But um, if you um, look at my articles on LinkedIn, I have an article that describes how to get, um, how to do this with PowerShell with, with this command. Yeah, this is the value right there. See if I'm looking for the wrong, the wrong place. There is. But we know I have administrator. Okay, so this one does have a timestamp. You can see um, November 17th is when administrator expires. So for some reason, the other user just doesn't have it stamped yet. Might not have been um, just added to his account, but here's how you would check. And then, so that's 60 days. And if I look at the default password policy, uh, the setting that we made was for 60 days. So we, we change this. We change this to 60 days today. So his expiration is, ba is based on that date. So he, his password was changed on the 17th of September then. But this is how you can, uh, you can do a spot check in um, Active Directory on-prem to see the expiration date and whether the policy applies. And uh, let's try to do that in, um, in Azure AD now. Let me pull up a command for that. And you can do that one in um, MSOL. So I'm back to this uh, connection I had before uh, in PowerShell.
So you run this and um, it will give you last password change timestamp and whether the password is expired. Now, um, one interesting thing is that in, um, in Azure AD, you don't actually have the attribute that shows you um, when the password expires because that's stored in graph. Uh, it's not stored in Azure AD. So you can get that value from graph, but you can't get an Azure AD. But the way to, to, to look up when the password expires in Azure AD would be to run this, uh, get MSO user with the last password change timestamp. You wanna see if password is set to, expi to never expire, uh, yes or no, and then you wanna check what policy applies to the user and just do the math. Um, and you can also do an export. You could export this to um, CSV. And that will export to um, Excel file. Actually, I don't have Excel here. Let me check. So if you export to Excel, it will look like this. We'll give a usernames, password last set. And now you wanna check what policy applies. So you can do the math between the password last changed. Um, let me try the other one. This is um, Azure AD module here.
Oops, sorry, wrong window. Yeah, let's try this way. Oh, because admin doesn't get synced. So if you put F file, then it will tell you, give you back everything that, that that's an Azure ID for that specific account. So you can see the, the password last change timestamp is here, was June 25th. That one hasn't changed for a while. And um, I want to see if it if it's, if it's set to expire. Password never uh, never expires. False. So you want to make sure that you know what accounts in your Azure AD tenant have this set to true, because then um, the password policies will not affect them. So now let's check what password policy applies to user. So that one was T Hill.
Well, that's odd because it looks like I typed everything right, but uh, I can do this. I can export this to temp. And see if I if I made a mistake typing. So this will give me the list of users without cutting off. And I can put something together here. So if you do user object ID FL, I'm looking for a policy. Password policy is none. So that user would have no expiration um, for that password. For whatever reasons, so you want to look for those users that don't have a password expiration policy. Uh, it, it may be because the password expiration was created after the user and they never logged on or they haven't logged on yet. Not sure, but for whatever reason, you want to make sure that this password expiration is set because if you check the tenant. you will notice that that account was created in Azure AD. Um, so if you go back here and you click on users, there's a column here called on-premise sync enabled. And if it says yes, then the account comes from uh, on-prem. If it says no, then the account comes from Azure AD. So if we look for that account right here, Tom Hill, this says no, which means that that account was created initially in Azure AD and it will always stay in Azure AD. Uh, and the password policy would be set in Azure AD. So we just found that that specific user um, doesn't have password policy applied to them. So how do we get a password policy to apply to that user? Um, we want to set password policies. See if we can do a set. What was the name of the password policy? Let me see that we created. Here. So if we run get, we'll get the name.
It'll just default. Should be right in here. I don't like that. So I was able to set him up with the policy. So now his policy is called disable password expiration, which is he can't password does not expire. But Okay, um, there isn't much time left. I just wanted to um, look at the company feature real quick. There is um, there is a PowerShell that uh, module that comes in uh, with AD Connect. Um, there is a switch for PowerShell, and there's a command in there. Um, get AD Sync company feature. Apparently, it's not working on this one. Uh, let me see if it's going to work in, in here in Sync. But you can also check this if you if you go to uh, your uh, AD Sync server where you have AD Connect. So um, I spoke initially about setting up options for AD Connect. And if you go to the AD Connect wizard, I want to uh, just go to the check mark, uh, which allows the uh, password sync back. So if you have the wizard open, the sync doesn't work. Um, if you go here into configure uh, company de device options, uh, so this one will give you an option for device device right back so this is um, not enabled by default but if you enable this option then it will give you a, a capability to write back device onto on-prem and then uh, synchronization options 
Yeah, we need to put a password for this. Okay, that did not work. Let's see if I got the right password. next so here's the here are the options so uh, passwords hash synchronization will synchronize passwords from on-prem ad to azure ad and then password write back will synchronize passwords back from um, azure ad back to the on-prem ad and then group write back will write the groups from Azure AD back to on-prem. So then you have to walk through this um, through this feature. Doesn't like me clicking on group write back. Looks like I don't have one of the prerequisites. And then this one is the directory attributes option, but you click through this. It wants a domain admin account or local AD read. Oh, I have an account set up for that. Well, of course, now it's not going to work. Nope, not today. Anyways, you just uh, go through this wizard and at the end of the wizard, this will close and then in your uh, on-prem Azure AD, you can go to Azure AD and then AD Sync. I'm still be here somewhere. Just AD Connect Health. 
run all errors, sync services. doesn't tell me much other than there are no errors. Oh, I'm going to be here. So in the home, it will give you recommend um, synchronization statistics, or it should. Right. Oh, okay. Now it's called Microsoft Entra Connect. No wonder, because it's all renamed. So here you can look at at the log, synchronization log. So there, the synchronization happens every five minutes, but when there is a change, then there is a delta sync that happens. But you can see there's one at 529, 512 update user. So when we change the policy on that user, that went to um, Azure AD. So you, you can look for that here in the cloud sync. This interface is actually new since it was renamed, but uh, well, you can see here we did changed group membership. The group is called complex passwords. So that group membership changed also went to Azure AD. Well, that's pretty much all I have for today. We only had three people. Hang on. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you for those who hang thank, on to the Thank to you. The could you please share, um, share the recording with us af afterwards? Yes, I will. I will post it on LinkedIn. Uh, it will be on the uh, in the articles. I'll post it there.